Hello, everyone. My name is Raymond Jones. If you don't know who I am, I've gone from top 50% to top 10% elite code, and I've gone from failing my Amazon OAs to being able to skip to on-site. In this video, I'm going to be going over how I would solve elite code problems in 2024 if I had to start over. So the first thing that I would do is find a list and start solving it. So it doesn't matter really what the list is. Um, I would probably lean towards doing Neat Code 150 because he has all of his YouTube video explanations on it on there, like on YouTube and I would do all 150 problems. Now, really core thing here is that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be solving the problems for 30 minutes. I'm not gonna be able to do them because I don't know like how to solve them before. I've just never seen like the patterns before. So I'm gonna spend 30 to 45 minutes trying to solve it and then look at the solution. And then the next day or two days from now, two days from like, you know, that point, I'm going to go back and try to solve the problem. And I should be able to do it maybe in like five or 10 minutes, depending on like, you know, I guess how much I was able to learn. If I still can't do it, well, hey, I'll look at the solution again and then keep going and then keep doing it. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to keep learning something new and keep growing, right? It's what I would recommend. And you just kind of keep doing that over and over again. It's a very annoying process. It feels like it's a lot like learning how to ride a bicycle, but you have to keep doing it over and over again because there's just so many patterns, right? Like you can get really good at arrays, but that means that you don't know stacks at all. So now you got to learn stacks and now you got to link, link, learn link lists. And now you have to learn trees and graphs and recursion. And you got to keep doing all that over and over again. And you feel like you're not growing at all, but what's actually happening is you're learning arrays, you're learning stacks, you're learning link lists, and you're going to get better. Um, it's just that as a, it's just a point of time and practice. And honestly, most people do not put in enough practice, right? Like I, when I was doing these problems in January, I was doing maybe 30 problems every week, right? And for a lot of people, that's more than they'll do in their lifetime. Like 99% of software engineers will do 50 and then they'll call it a day. So overall, like the kind of roadmap I would do is do neat codes list so I can solve more problems. That is like the number one thing that's going to lead to you growing is solving more problems, learning new patterns, using those patterns and just continuing that process, solve more problems. Uh, I think you should solve at least 10 problems a week. Although I really do think that, you know, if you're, if it's summertime, you don't have any classes, you're just kind of chilling. You could easily do 30 problems a week because you have like so much time, right? If you don't have any internships, you can go ahead and do that. Number two is I would be aware of my mindset, right? I've always been kind of, you know, I've always enjoyed um, the psychology of things and like reading psychology books. I've read like an entire book on cognitive behavioral therapy, which is a really famous, you know, therapy technique in the West for like, you know, kind of crushing your, your bad mental thoughts and how it really starts is just being aware right? You're aware of if you're really, really depressed, if you're really, really anxious, you just bring awareness to the fact that like, oh, this thought is happening. And then when you have awareness of those thoughts, when you have awareness of kind of your mental state and your mental patterns, because everybody just has patterns, it's all kind of like evolutionary biology where like, if your you know, mom told you that you were a failure, or your dad told you you were a failure, right? Like, you internalize those and they kind of just surface up. They kind of like bubble up in random times. But essentially what you can do is be, just be aware, know that, oh, hey, like when this thing like triggers me, right? When someone says, oh, you're a failure, like this is, I can intercept this and just be aware and know that like, oh, my mind is going to do this thing. Uh, in, the, in the sense of leak code, right? This happens where people are solving problems. And this happens to me too, right? Like I'm not like a, you know, a master or whatever. Like it's the same like reactions where something happens, right? Your mind gives you thoughts. For me, I can solve a problem and I can be stuck on it sometimes. And my mind will say, oh, well, you're a failure. Like you should just give up, right? Like there's no point in even bothering to solve this problem. Oh, this problem is way too hard. Like, why would you even bother doing it? And I'll have these thoughts, but I also recognize too, and I'm just aware and I don't have to let it like kind of like dominate like where I decide to go. Uh, this is a again a technique in cognitive behavioral therapy like if you're working with some psychiatrist they're gonna tell you like hey here's what you can do and here's how you can be more aware of your your state uh, i would work really hard to adopt that now again i think this is going to take like months maybe years right uh, months before you see results and then years before it's actually like a strong thing but i think it's going to be something that's going to just impact you way more than just like doing lead code if you can really really master like this type of awareness and control over like what your mind is telling you or not. Third thing I would do is I would start doing leak code contests so I can track my progress. I, I wish I did it earlier, although I did do it pretty early thanks to Twitch streaming. There were people in there who said, hey, you need to do contests and I did the contests. And you wanna do contests because one, it's a simulated environment where you need to solve the problems. It's just like an interview. You're gonna give in, you're gonna give in like, you know, several problems and you need to solve them in a quick succession. Um, if you can't do that in the interview, you fail. You can't do that in a contest, right? You know that you're not ready for an interview. Number two, reason is that because you're simulated in like a high pressure environment, you can actually get really good practice in. You can actually like turn on your brain and go at like a hundred percent as opposed to when you normally practice, you might go at like 80 or 70%, right? Third reason 
is that you want to gauge your progress. You want to see how you're improving over time. And so remember when I said at the start or at the start, if you weren't watching, I said that you need to solve more problems, right? I said that you need to because that's what's going to lead to you getting better. And you're going to notice some interesting trend when you do contests is that the more problems you end up solving, the better you do on contests because you've just seen patterns before you, you recognize you have the tools and you're learning. And that's a very, very powerful thing because that ties in to number two, where when you tell yourself you're a failure, well, hold on, you see the results, you see you're improving, you're obviously not a failure and you actually can keep pushing through and keep going. Right. That's a very, very cool thing to see. And this is a big reason too why you, if you're going to the gym, you want to take progress pictures when you're really, really skinny, even though you think you suck, like even though you know it's not gonna be worth it or whatever, take the pictures and then a month later, two months later, right? You can see like the gains. Another thing too is I would solve problems with with friends. So I would try to find like some group of people, like some community online where I can solve problems, talk about problem, and we can kind of like push each other to improving. That'll be really, really critical in my um you know like my kind of thing and i think yeah i think that that's going to help a lot right if all of your friends like smoke weed and like just do drugs like that's probably what you're going to be doing right if they all they do is play video games that's probably what you're going to do if all your friends are like struggling and like trying to push themselves to work at like a top company or get into like a top school right you're probably going to be doing that trail um, i would leverage that kind of psychology and like find that group of people then uh, we have like some questions too i'm going to go over those so does your iq matter for lead code no like yes it does matter for lead code but it doesn't matter like significantly right I've kind of told talked about this before, but not that many people even practice, right? Like people will probably solve 50 problems and then that's kind of it for like the rest of their life. Um, most people are not putting in nearly enough practice to even for IQ to even matter. Um, and two, if you have a if you have a computer science degree, you're probably already smart. So like you're, you, you meet the IQ threshold of doing this. The, the thing that you're missing is the practice part, right? Um, I think a lot of people think that like smart people are just born with like inherent knowledge that they think that like, um, Einstein just kind of woke up and he was like, oh, I know theory of relativity. Like when he was, I think he was about 25 at the time. But the, the reality of it is that he was just solving problems for like three hours every single day since he was like 10 years old, right? Like, yes, he was a genius. Yes, he was really, really smart, but he was also just practicing like a ton, right? Like, like geniuses don't just wake up and they're just like, oh, shoot, I know how the universe works, right? They don't, they don't wake up at five years old and they're like, oh, yeah, we know it. I know like this is how the universe works, right? What, is, what typically happens is they're just practicing, 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 and they're also smart too. Um, so anyways, all that I say, yeah, practice more. Don't worry about lead code or don't worry about IQ. Does your school matter? In the United States, I don't think your school matters for like FANG, like for FANG companies trying to get, like it, it does matter for sure, right? Like for example, if you work at, if you're at Harvard, um, you're gonna have way more resources. They're gonna be trying to recruit you at those events. So there's gonna have like, like Google's gonna have an event, Meta's gonna have an event, and they're all looking for, they're doing those events with the exact intent of trying to hire somebody. So it helps that you can just go easily go to those events, but it doesn't matter in the sense that it's a barrier, right? There's a lot of industries where if you don't go to the school, then you're kind of considered like trash and like, you're just not gonna be considered at all. For Fang, it's not like that. They're a lot more open-minded. And the, the really core thing that you need to do is they'll give you the interview, but you have to do the problem. And if you can't do it, then you don't get the, the job. Okay, and then uh, what should I do as a beginner, like what if I'm stuck and I can't solve a problem? What if I can't understand the solution after like a day, right? If you can't understand the solution after a day, go back and you practice it again, right? You study the solution again and then you go back and try to solve it, right? You do that until you can actually get it. Not memorizing the code, but memorizing like the underlying idea and like how the, the code works, right? Uh, maybe memorize the code too, but like you really want to understand like that pattern, like what is happening. And because of that, you can start applying it to other things. If you just only memorize code or whatever you're trying to memorize, like what does this code look like as opposed to like, what is the code doing? You understand? Yeah. So anyways, this is how I would solve leak code problems in 2024. And if I had to start over, I would do all of these things. And I'd be pretty confident in myself that I would actually just crush because again, I think 99% of people are probably just giving up way too early. And I think I'm good enough to where I can just choose something and I can just be consistent at it for a long period of time. So. Thanks for watching and like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video.